We're going to start off with Nebraska and Northwestern. Of course, this one over in Ireland. Uh, I've got the basic stats that you would need to know up on the screen here. And the postgame win expectancy, as I mentioned before, 55% for Northwestern and 45% for Nebraska in a 31-28 to game. Uh, the onside kick by Nebraska, when they were up 28-17 to early, early in the second half, why would you do it? I mean, this is what everybody's laughing about right now, right? It's Scott Frost, everybody knew that you had to come out with a win in week one or in week zero, and this is what they put up there. Now, if you look at the offensive yards per play, Nebraska had 8.44 in this game. The issue is, uh, let's see if we can move over, over here. The scrimmage plays, only 62 for Nebraska, 80 for Northwestern. I uh, that, that ain't going to cut it. I mean, 8.44 is really good. The issue is the EPA here, the total EPA, 0.41. And for Northwestern, it was 15.51. So the plays were much more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Northwestern just was more efficient and more effective in the way that they played this game. It was just insane to watch because I, I almost couldn't believe it. Uh, Nebraska gave up two 11-point leads here, and that is mind-blowing stuff. Just mind-blowing. Uh, Nebraska did have three turnovers. Obviously, that's important. Uh, Nebraska had a better third-down conversion rate. They tried to go for it once on fourth down. Didn't get it. Uh, Northwestern did get that one. Scoring opportunities. Nebraska had more scoring opportunities, but they had less points per scoring opportunity. I mean, who'd have thunk it? Uh, they had worse field position. Their their field position in this game, they averaged starting at their own 18-yard line. Hidden yardage. Pat Fitzgerald does it again. Like, he just continues, even years for the Wildcats, they continue to be good over and over and over again. I mean, it's just mind-blowing stuff. Ryan Holinsky really surprised me in this ball game because ever since he got to Evanston, he has not been a good quarterback. And maybe there's something to the idea of developing and learning under the system. Uh, Mike Bajakian, uh, I hope I say that right, that's the offensive coordinator for Northwestern. He uh, is still relatively new. He was the Boston College offensive coordinator when Steve Adazio was there. And he had some interesting thoughts, interesting things that he was doing as the OC early on. But I think once you get the system set, maybe that's okay. Their offensive line was a little bit better than I assumed that they would be. But at the same time, there's not a lot of depth on Nebraska's defensive line. I really thought Mathis was going to be more of an impact player than he showed in, in this first game. Um, but man, I mean, just just not good. All, all over the place. Um, looking, looking at expected turnovers, etc. Uh, turnover luck over here. And let's see if you can see it on the screen here. Uh, turnover luck as far as points go. I mean, for Nebraska, it was negative 7.8 points, which, of course, in turn means 7.8 points for Northwestern that they maybe would not have had if it had not been for the turnovers. Uh, it, it's, it felt that onside kick is the biggest thing. That's what everybody really wants to talk about. And I don't think it's that. I don't think that's the big thing that you can take from it. I, I think that I heard the Cover 3 podcast guys talking about this. It felt like last year... Everybody pointed at special teams. It, special teams. That's the reason why Nebraska's not winning ball games. It, okay, so now this offseason, they go out and they get a special teams coach, and they're working on things, and they started looking pretty good. They were actually fielding punts well. They were actually punting the ball well. Uh, the extra points were good. Kickoffs were good, etc. Everything was good. And then they decide to go and do an onside kick, because they're already up by 11, so it's not like if you give up a short field, it's going to uh, cost you the entire lead in one series. But at the same time, there was no reason to do it. Northwestern had already shown that they were not going to be big play guys. They, they, they were going to have to work for their yardage. And it's not that they couldn't get the yardage, obviously, as we, as we see. They had 527 yards on offense. But in order for them to get down the field... It was going to take a lot more effort. And when you shorten the field for them, I mean, it just gives them more opportunity. So I did not fully understand why you would do that at that point. And I don't think anybody did. Even Scott Frost came out afterwards and said, hey, that was on me. That was a bad decision. 
But I think that's what Nebraska fans are irritated about because it's always bad decisions, whether it's from Scott Frost or it's from the players. You brought in a whole slew of new players this year, and you're still going through the same issues that you were before. I don't know how you continue to do that. I mean, it's it's really mind-blowing stuff. Um, how about this one? Scott Frost throwing his offensive coordinator under the bus in the postgame. It's inexcusable. It's absurd. It is... I, I don't even know what to say. Like, if I'm Mark Whipple, I am really irritated. Now, there is part of me that thinks that maybe some of this has to do with the fact that Scott Frost still considers himself a part of that offensive staff. But he said that I think that uh, the offensive staff is going to learn in this conference, you have to be more creative. But the issue necessarily isn't creativity. It's just making adjustments. Just, you know, normal adjustments that you would make at halftime of a game once you realize what another team is capable of doing. And yeah, it looked like they made adjustments early on by coming out and scoring 14 straight points. And part of that was, you know, from Northwestern, uh, from a Northwestern turnover. But, I, my gosh, it looked like they were doing the same thing over and over again. And once Northwestern figured them out, it was game, set, match. Uh, the, the drive at the end of the game uh, was just brutal. Where all they did was run the ball and Nebraska could not stop them. It's not the offense's fault for Nebraska. The issue is this Northwestern team does not have nearly as much talent as that Nebraska team, and they put up 527 yards of offense and 31 points. The Northwestern last year went 3-9, and nine, the same as Nebraska, but Northwestern was not in hardly any of those games that they lost. I mean, this was really mind-blowing stuff. But it, it does, you know, it, one, uh, let me go ahead and give some props over to Northwestern. Ryan Holinsky looked good. I, I said it earlier, but I'm going to say it again. Ryan Holinsky looked really, really good in this ballgame. I mean, he was uh, other level, absolutely other level kind of player, Um you know, 313 yards and two touchdowns, uh, like 81 XQBR, like <laughs> 9.48 yards per play. Like, Helensky was good. He was good. Evan Hull, 22 carries, 119 yards. Uh, Cam Porter, 19 carries, 94 yards, one touchdown. He did have one fumble. Um, at the running attack looks good. The offensive line looks pretty good for Northwestern. Like, this is awesome. Before Nebraska, two double-digit leads given up in this game. And I don't know where you go from here. I really don't. Like, I, it's only the first game. You try not to overreact too much. But the buyout for Scott Frost drops from $15 million to $7.5 million on October 1st. Yeah, they're going to win the next couple of ball games. Once Oklahoma comes in there, can you get a win over Oklahoma? I mean, I know it's at home. But at this point, I don't know. I, I really have no idea. So, just mind-blowing stuff out of Dublin, Ireland, for sure. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.